It all depends on the, the tolerances manufactured on that particular <coughs> twist grip sensor. If, if they're on, uh, on the, that particular twist grip sensor, okay? So if, if that one was made and just so happens to be riding that edge, and you, yeah, you extend the wires, um, especially if you use the ones that are, you know, just two connectors, you know, essentially what they've done is taken the, the actual amp connector pins and you put them together and you heat shrink them, that can cause a problem. Uh, acid core silver solder, we see people use it, we know we shouldn't, you know, we should use rosin core, I, I, I prefer to use silver, but, uh, but yeah, that's just anything in the whole, uh, the, the other issue, if you, if you, you know, where your stock harness comes up, it makes the tight turn right there to the side of the throttle body, they're notorious for breaking. Um, in the early production HDs, uh, they had a big recall in 08 and 09 uh, because of the terminals corroding at the ECM and at the throttle body. And there was a big recall where they, they had three pin connectors, three or four. Where's my deal? Where's he at? Topeka, where are you at? I want to say it's like four. I've done a couple of them yeah. and I don't. Okay. They say it's like vibration too. Right. Well, what the factory did, they, 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 they had the dealers replace <coughs> those pin connectors with gold terminals. So, um, a lot of issues. And that's really why we waited so long to come out with the Gen 6. Yeah, so, you said, so you said that the correlations could be off and the bike runs, runs okay. What kind of symptom would you see? Uh, in, inconsistencies in off idle, the occasional skip and hiccup. Um, Variances in fuel economy, you would see that. Um, maybe one instance of a limp mode. The guy's riding, he goes into limp mode, and then all of a sudden it works fine again. Yeah, so that's that's really it. You just have to sit back and wait, unfortunately. Okay, any questions on that so far? All right. Okay. I promise when we go through these steps, I'm trying to kind of tell you guys the why as we go along. When we get done with this thing, I'm going to go through and show you the quick way, bang, to knock it out every time. Okay? So there is hope. I promise. <laughs> All right? There's three numbers that this report gives us that's very important. Throttle position zero. And I know it may be hard to see back here in the back. TPS limp back and TPS wide open. And it gives us three numerical values, okay, 96, 147, and 954. What we just did was test the throttle position sensor full scale, all right? We're giving you the ability to adjust the scale of the throttle position sensor and to correlate it perfectly with the twist grip sensor. There's nothing else out there that can do that. Okay. So we're working around all the inconsistencies to try to be as precise as we pro possibly can before we fire the bike. Okay. Those three numbers are important. If you guys have some paper, if you don't mind, write them down. I'm going to make this real, I'll make, I'll make it easy, I promise. <laughs> but those three numbers are important. Okay. You got a question? Yeah. This is only correlating the TPS and the throttle body. There's no correlation for the push grip sensor in this all not in this step, but that's where we're going next. Okay. Yeah, that's where we're going next. All right. After we've done that test, we're going to exit out. Those are the numbers we have to acquire? Those are the numbers that they have to be we're good? No. We, I, I, there are limits with everything, right? We don't care what the numbers are because we're going to make up for it in the software. I'm going to show you how to make that correlation work, right? There are limits for various different reasons. Let's say, for example, I had a, um, I'm going to use the term firmware, okay? Firmwares are hard code programming in the computer, right? If, if I knew somebody was dealing with a stock bike or doing mild builds or something like that, then I would have one version of the firmware that has one particular limit in, in for the throttle plates for those numbers, okay? 
if we were doing 70 plus millimeter throttle body on a drag bike, that's a different story. That one would have different limits. Okay, now that being said, you can run the ones that have the higher limits on a stock bike. It's not gonna hurt anything. But what we're trying to do is make it obvious that there's a problem, if that makes sense. Okay, if we give you one that has the limits in it that should be on a street bike and you put it on a street bike and we find that those values are way off scale, then we know you've got another problem. I almost want to call it a check and balance. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So we, we've, we've checked the throttle plate. Now we're going to check the twist grip central. That's actually read throttle position, read twist grip sensor. All we have to do, again, with the bike on, the first thing we're going to do is roll the throttle floor forward and hit enter. We get twist grip one voltage level of 71. Then we'll do the test again, but with our hand off the throttle. 227. All right. Then, do the same thing again, but we're going to hold it wide open, 926. We've just checked the entire range of the twist grip sensor. Now that we have the full range of the throttle position sensor and the full range of the twist grip sensor, we, all we have to do is plug a couple numbers in, and we've just completely calibrated and made up for every single inconsistency in the system. Worn throttle body, bad twist, you know, or out of range twist grip, everything. We we just compensated for all of that. Okay, make sense. All right. Now let me tell you what to do with those numbers. For probably about the next three or four months, you'll have to do this step. Beyond that, we're going to make it automatic. Even when we make it automatic, I would like to encourage you to do it manually. Because when you do it manually, you'll, you'll start to feel, and we, you know, we have ranges that, that we tell you. It should kind of be in this range, but you'll start to get an idea of what those numbers should be. And when you get, say, wide open throttle and twist grip, if it shows 856, you know you're going to have a bad twist grip. Go ahead and sell them one. All right. So let's take those numbers. We plug them in. We had our TPS wide open. The TPS limp back. The TPS zero. Then we did our twist grip sensor. <coughs> we key those numbers in, and it does the math for us. Okay. I know I've got different numbers there, but <laughs> it's what it is, right? So we're going to say 925. Full scale. Okay, so we've got our numbers there. Full scale. We're going to hold on to those numbers. We're done with that. Okay. That's it for testing the throttle body and the twist grip. And again, over the years, as we were developing the Gen 6, the for just fly by wire applications there, um, we had the system years ago. We'd install it. Throttle wasn't working right. And then we started checking. And that's why this step is in there. Okay. We don't want to complicate things for everybody. It's a it's necessary. Alright. Now, now that we have that number, I'm going to show you how to build a base map quickly. Okay. We do have a selection of maps and we're building on them that'll help you get started. The truth of it is you really don't need them. Okay, you need something just to load, and then you can build your own from there. All right, so that's what we're going to show you. So to review, we've turned the bike on, we pulled the maxi fuse.